ratchet and a tool kit is all in the well where the spare tire would normally be. And that is the leather covered jack yep. hole. I'll show you. This is Keller's personal, JT Keller's personal no car. Stuff. And it's all in a leather case. Yeah, yeah it's the way it's to stand. We just did the base did. for it. Wow. I was there. Holy right. smoke. Look at that. It's all in leather. <laughs> 15 hides of leather, 25 coming to Hey, thank you. Paul, how are you? Is that beautiful? Now, the one question which I have, will that jack actually hold this car, and would he ever use it? Well, I'll answer the first question. Yes, because I have some production cars. Okay. Very good. The second question, probably not. <laughs> no. Although Keller being an engineer, he probably could do it. Right. This is this is remarkable. Well, the fit and finish because of the one-off. And this was specifically built for Keller as a personal car, or was this actually prototype? Well, he directed the project. I actually found three engineers that were in their 80s 15 years ago. Hopefully they're still with us, but they may not be. That told me the whole story. Mm -hmm. This was built in Central Engineering, and Keller would come in on a regular basis, like at the end of the day, right, and say, do this, do that, this is how I want this, try to make it that way. Uh huh. And apparently, he kind of drove them crazy, they said. Well, of course. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's what I said yesterday. No, that's not what I want. You know, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, it was kind of a unique thing. It, you know, Virgil Exner had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, this was body number two for 55. Right. And it went into central engineering and was cut and grafted and everything was done according to what Mr. Keller wanted. Well, Exner was not getting along with uh, Chrysler Engineering at all, from what I understand. Right? I didn't know that. Yeah. He was not, uh, mm, he was having problems, but then when he found he got through the, uh, he got his 55 through revolutionizing the industry yes. with the forward look. Really changed Chrysler's look. I mean, oh, like a 54 looked like a 44. Yes. Or, you know, 10 years before. Yes. And I well, that's why GM had the one year only 58s because of the uh, 57s 50s. that changed yep. again. They were just beautiful, and the new Chryslers made the GMs look old fashioned. So it was really pretty, it was an amazing time for yeah, well, uh, really Detroit. Are changing on a monthly basis. Oh, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Now, uh, this Imperial, um, it was. Uh, one, uh, there's two you said that were built, or is just one? This is the only one. Just one. In 56, um, rumor has it, I don't have documentation to this, just... some friends of Keller, or people who had seen this car, right? Um, E.C. Quinn, who was president of the Chrysler division, uh, Paul Smith, who was editor of Collier's Magazine, which was a big um, place where Chrysler advertised. Yes. And I understand a, a gentleman that owned a, a tannery up in maybe Wisconsin, I think, um, wound up with three 56 New Yorkers that were sent to a third party, and I don't know who that is. I've, I've met people who own these cars and can't find out who it was. And they converted them to look like Imperials. Like the Imperial right. grills and the tail lights and, you know, the whole yeah. style. Well, like what they did with the 300s. Yep. So, very interesting. Okay. Now, you also said, I overheard, with fuel injection, this car originally was injected? There was a gentleman, and I forgot his name, um, who, uh, Bert Dickinson, uh -huh. Bert Dickinson was in charge of fuel and exhaust systems, that department at Chrysler. Right. And he told me that when, when they, they were developing fuel injection back uh -huh. in that era, and he told me that the Keller said, put one of those things on my car. I want to see what it does. Now, is this a Bendix mechanical? Yes. Okay. It was very, it wasn't ready. Right. So they put it on the car, and rumor has it that he went to the Detroit Athletic Club, which was like an only club back in those days. Oh, yeah. And got stuck there, because I guess it had trouble starting hot. It wasn't okay. ready for production. Okay. I think they produced we don't know, we a handful of them in 58 on 300s, I think. And then they were pulled them off. Pulled them off, yeah. Yeah. So he had that, that was on this car, and Bert Dickinson told me the story. He said, when Mr. Keller got stuck and we had to bring his car back on a hook, it wasn't good. He was chairman. Of course. So they, uh, 
They converted this back to a stock Carter WCFB carburetor, and Bert Dickinson said, I personally drove the car back and forth to work like for a week to make sure everything was set just right so Mr. Keller wouldn't have any more problems because it was kind of an embarrassment. Well, yeah, especially when a uh, Ford record comes by picking him up. Probably was a Dodge. Yeah, it better be. It, it better, better be. be. Dodge, right. <laughs> well, look, uh, the uh, old accident with Henry Ford when he passed away. What was the uh, car which took him to his final resting place? Packard. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Oh, you know a lot about things. Huh? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> she did what is your name, so, by the way? Pam Hirschhorn uh, from NortheastWheelsEvents.com. Oh, wow. And that's where this interview is going nice to be. Nice to meet you. And your name is? My name is Chip Laurie. Chip Laurie, very good. Yep. And you were part of the restoration team on this car? I did everything except the interior and that gentleman right there, Jerry Ambrosi. Very uh, good. Worked with me and did all the interior work. Wow. I was a helper for that. <laughs> oh, Jerry's the needle man, huh? That's oh, yeah. Me. Very Coming good. Inside, he, is, he is the man. You like to hide out, I'm sure. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so. <laughs> H-Y-D-E. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. Hey, look, you know, I don't know if I could trust you because you really get into deceit. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop when I'm ahead. You better stop. <laughs> Let me take a quick walk about this very sure. unique Chrysler. I'll close this for you. <laughs> This is Pam, of course, at the 2015 Elegance at Hershey. Well, we see KT Keller's personal Imperial convertible. One off. Notice the clock. Notice the shifter in the dash. I love it. I'd like to leave the hood. Yeah, leave the hood up a bit. Less than Meyer. Yes, it's got a Hemi. That's the real Hemi. That's the second generation Hemi. Oh. Well, same displacement as the original. Right. But, you know, they upped the horsepower from 180 to 250 with mm -hmm. carburetion, exhaust, stroke. Interesting with the power brakes already in uh, this early. Yeah. A one year power brake booster by Kelsey Hayes. Would you believe in 51? Yeah. They had disc brakes? 49. 49. Yes. 49 they tried. Country. Well, come on. Crosley uh, led the way with that. Oh, did they? All yes, right. they did. Oh, man, you are a motorhead. A little bit. <laughs> Tell me about that. I didn't know anything about the Crosleys and 